Alright guys, today we're going to be talking about the Gibbs quad ski and problems with the reverse motor and the flickering dash. This is the most common problem with these Gibbs is that the reverse doesn't work. And if you are going to replace the reverse motor, that's not most likely going to be the problem. First of all, if you are having problems with the reverse motor, you have a instrument cluster like this. If you see this digital portion, it may look blurry or out of focus. And that is related to this problem with the reverse motor. So the reverse motor is actually because you have a motorcycle engine in the Gibbs. It's just a starter motor that's connected to the transmission flywheel. And so when you push the button, you're just engaging the starter solenoid and energizing the starter to move the quad ski. The starter is not really made to run, to drive this thousand pound quad ski around, at least not for very long. So to protect the engine from overheating, what Gibbs did is they ran it through their wiring harness into their fuse panel. This is the relay for the solenoid on the reverse motor. Now the reverse motor windings come directly from the battery to the reverse motor, but you still have to engage the solenoid which connects the power to the battery and that is run through this. Now as that reverse motor is being powered, it gets very, very hot and the load becomes very high and that overheats the solenoid and causes more and more amperage needed to power it. And that's why they've put a 30 amp trip relay right here. This relay, when it gets to over 30 amps, turns off and stops you from being able to use the reverse. The problem is in the way that the reverse solenoid is connected to the car. You see, it is a higher amp load, so it requires a higher amperage to run it. Obviously, they've intended it to operate at 30 amps. But if you look at the back of it here, these are the two wires that go into and out of that trip relay. And as you can see, one of them is a thicker gauge wire. That one is actually thick enough to handle a larger amperage. But this one right here is tiny. This is a 15 gauge wire and it is not rated for more than 20 amps. So the wire itself would fail before this relay. That's a design flaw. If you follow this wire back into the harness to see where it comes from, it comes from a junction right here where a bunch of wires are coming from. These wires, if you follow them, they go to the power supply for the instrument cluster. And if you follow where the wires go to the starter, you'll find that the wire that engages that solenoid probably gonna look like this, just black and burnt because it's just not able to support the load. And also it's an open-ended connector that is subject to moisture environment and corrosion, which means more resistant, which means more current needed for it, which even amplifies this problem. First, you're gonna need to go to the left fuse box as, as you're sitting on it. So when you're looking at it, it will be on your right. So it's gonna be the fuse panel on this side here, and this is the relay this these two relays are the ones and then you're gonna need to remove that just four Phillips head screws and then it will push out the back of the little panel that it's in pull it down and get access to the rear then as you're looking at it as it's mounted the very bottom right small relay that 30 amp relay that is the trip relay for the over amp protection you're gonna need to depin and remove this small red wire out of the back go ahead and cut that and cap it so it won't contact anything. You're no longer gonna be drawing power from that. You're gonna replace that, that small 14, 16 gauge wire that can't handle the load. You're gonna replace that with an eight or 10 gauge wire that you need to route directly from the battery to that pin. This will give you a direct line to the battery. Uh, you can put a fuse on that line if you wanna be sure that if it shorts out, it doesn't cause any problems, uh, but that will give you a clean power supply. Then the other side of that relay is a purple and black wire that goes up to the the control relay. That wire may be damaged due to the overheating. So probably want to deep in and replace that. And then out of that control relay, which is the second relay from the top on the left side of that fuse panel, is a red wire with a green tracer. That goes all the way through the harness to the reverse motor solenoid that's on the reverse motor. You're gonna need to replace that whole wire. When you connect the new connector to it, slather dielectric grease all over that connector it is an exposed, un 
uninsulated wire and so it will be especially in salt water environments it will corrode causing rough high resistance which will cause high amps which will cause failure early all right to fix the dash you will have to replace it after it's been blurryified <laughs> you really just have to replace it